All right, so we are done with the first part. We designed the screen. This part, we're gonna cover, the, in the next part, we're going to cover the, uh, uh, the navigation part. So I'm gonna create more screens and we're going to use segways and how to navigate from one screen to the other screen, all right? So let's minimize, let's zoom out and let's add two additional screens. And I'm going to work on the navigation first and then we can do the controls, all right? So I'm gonna add plus, we will add a view controller. So we have a view controller. That's the first view controller. And we're going to add another view controller. Here's my second view controller. So I have three different view controllers. Now, obviously, you know, all they all have the same white screens, but to distinguish between them, I'm going to give them different colors just for, it's not gonna be great, but at least you'll have, you know that you have different screens. You click on the plus, and then you select view controller and drag it on the screen. Is everybody okay? Okay, I'll pause recording, give you a chance. All right, so I'm going to change the background for this view to something different. Okay, we'll use weird colors. <laughs> so yellow or orange. And this one is going to be, um, let's use blue for this one. Okay, really ugly, but uh, no, we want the background color. We'll use blue. Okay. So when we click on register, We'll start with register first. I want to go to this one and I want to present it modally. So if I, how we go to the screen, you right click, drag and drop on the view controller. And we click on, no, present modally. When you do this, you'll notice that this one is, there is a, a blank area on top. That means you can dismiss the screen by swiping down, all right? When you swipe down, you dismiss that screen. Okay, is that clear? If, now for this screen, I'm gonna use for the button again, right click and drag here. And this is one I'm going to use show. Again, you're not going to see the difference, but I'll show you what's gonna happen when we embed this in a navigation controller. All right? No, one is modal and one is show. Let me pause for a minute. Okay, so now let's just run the application and see what happens. If I run the application, I wanna stop, I wanna run it on the uh, different device.
Okay, so now if I click on the register button, If I click on the register button, what will happen? This blue screen, this is supposed to be the registration screen. I can dismiss it by swiping down. Same thing with this, because it's show, I can dismiss it by swiping down. But when we add the navigation controller, you'll see there is a difference, all right? So now <clears throat> let's see if the auto layout works. If I turn in my device, the auto, layout, the auto layout worked, all right? It's still centered and the stack reviews and still looks reasonable, right? If I turn it the other way, it's okay. If I turn it the other way, it's okay. And if I turn it the other way, it's okay, all right? If you run it on a different device, test it on a different device, it should be okay as well, all right? Time. This is how we do it. We just do simple navigation, just simply right click from the control to the, to, the, uh, to the screen that you want. And based on that, you can decide whether you want to present it modally or uh, through uh, uh, an application or a push. Now you need to look at the human interface guide. Like an application like setting, you have hierarchies. You go from one to the other, and then you come back. So let's say this is similar. I want, when I'm here, I go back here, I want to be able to come back, all right? From here, or from, I, I have a navigation controller here, all right? Let's test both of them. So if I add the navigation controller here, I click on embed navigation controller. And watch what's gonna happen. You will have here, you will have a navigation controller. This is your navigation controller. That's the top, right? And here is my first screen. It added the navigation controller with the title. If I wanna add a title, I can say log in, for example. Whatever, okay, so, and then let me just zoom in so you can see it. So that's the title of the navigation controller. And here, because I'm using push or show on this one, it gave me also a title here. So I can put here BMI, for example, for the title. And for this one, the one below, because I used modal, it does not have the navigation controller. So the modal does not show you the navigation controller, but if you use show, it will show you the navigation controller. All right. So now if I play, if we run it, If I click on register, that's the model, push down. If I click on login, it will take me to the BMI and then I can do the back. Is that clear, everyone? All right. These segues have names. These segues have names. So this connection, these are called segues. It's a way to transport from one screen to the other screen. And then you can sometimes use them to pass information to the subsequent screens, all right? Now, we're going to use only, I'm gonna show you one example. We have the username here. I'm gonna enter the value. And when I click on log in, I will, it will take me to the screen and then I will have the value from this screen on this screen, the username, all right? 
And then you can do the BMI, you can watch the controls lecture, and then you can add your controls to the BMI, all right? So now if I go to the, to here, I'm just going to simply add a label. All right, uh, let's make this label a little big. All right. The function of this label only to take whatever information you have from this screen and pass it to this screen. All right. So how do we do this? First of all, each screen should have a Swift class tied to it. Yani, this screen should have a Swift class. This screen should have a Swift class if you're doing any calculations or any processing. So how do I tell that, how do I say, how do I make, or how do I create a class and tie it to these view controllers? You go to file, new, and then we click on file. We select Coca touch class. And then we say next, and then we need the, the class subclass, the parent class has to be UI view controller. It has to be UI view controller. So this one, we're gonna call it DMI view controller. BMI view controller. And it's a Swift class that I click on next. And then we click on create. So now it gave me a class that just a Swift class, but it's not tied to anything. I need to associate this class with the view. So I go to the main storyboard, the second one here, this one here, this view controller, we select it. And on top, do you see this called identity inspector? If I select this guy, then I can link this view controller with the Swift class that I called it BMI view controller. If I click on the down arrow, you'll see that BMI view controller is listed. And now they are linked. So the code for this view controller is the BMI view controller class, Swift class. I'll pause it and uh, see if you have any questions. Okay, so now we have a label and I need to add an action to this label. Not sorry, I need to create an outlet to this label. So we click on, we select the, this class. I'm gonna hide these, oh no, not this one. I'm gonna hide the project and the property. So I have a little bit more space to work with. And I'm going to reduce the zoom so you see what I'm talking about. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the assist, assistant. And because I already made that link between the view controller and the Swift class, it shows me the BMI view controller. If it's not showing you the BMI view controller, that means you have a mistake. You did not link them together. You need to go to back to the identity inspector and link them together. Is that clear? So now I can do the outlet for this label. So I'm gonna simply click on the outlet here. And this is going to be label name, for example. That's for the outlet. Now, I need to set a value in this class from the other class. So how do I set a value from in this class from the other class? I need to create a property here. And this property is going to be name and it's going to be a typo string. So in here, I will say var string, uh, name and it's going to be a string, I'm gonna assign it blank, so I don't have to create a, an initializer, all right? So it'll have blank value. 
So all we did, we created a link, an outlet from the label to the class, and we define a variable called name in the class. We're done with this screen. There's one more thing that we have to do before we do finish. In the view did load, the view did load will be executed first when you, when you first load the view controller. What we're going to do in here, I'm going to display this name in the label. Now, if it has a value, it will display that value. If it doesn't have a value, it will display a blank. So if I say label name dot what text equal what name. Label name dot text equal name. All right. Now we're done with this view controller. We're ready to pass information to it from the first view controller. How do we go to the first view controller? Here is my view first view controller. And I'm going to show the code. And we don't need this. Okay, no, we need the outlets, obviously, right? We need the outlet for the name, at least to pass it to the other view controller. So I can right click here, and this is going to be name, PXT name. And I'm going to do the other one, PXT password. All right. Sorry. This thing that is this thing called Segway is taking me from here to here. It carries a lot of information. Sometimes I need to know what's, which Segway I'm going to or which view controller I'm going to. So I need to give them name. So if I select this one and I go to the property for this, I'm, gonna I'm done with this. I'm going to close this. If I select this segue and I give it, if I go to the property here, and then I will say the, uh, for the, for the, in the property, I can give it a name. So the name of this segue is going to be BMI. Why do I do this? So I can identify which screen I'm going to and what information to pass to, uh, what information I'm passing. So we use the identifier to define the, to identify these segues, which tell me where I'm going and what kind of information I can pass to it, all right? So it's called BMI. So we change the segue name to, in the property to BMI. The last thing we need to do is that we need to go to the view controller and pass the information. So if I go to the view controller, if we show the project, I think I clicked on double click on the storyboard. Make sure cancel. You know, make sure that we stop this. Okay. So that's the storyboard. Mm, no, we are not in the right class. Let's to make sure that we are yeah, viewing the controller. All right. So here is the project, and here is the view controller. And here's my outlet. There is a function that is defined in the parent class view I controller and that allow me to prepare myself before I go to the next screen. And that is called prepare for segue. Prepare for segue. If I select that guy, I put my code here and notice it says override means what it is actually you're overriding this control. Now, if I put sender any, 
instead of sender any, you can put anything you want, or you can say this, or you can put the name of the button that is sending the action, which is in this case, it's an attribute being sent to us. It's called sender. No, we don't have an action. So just say this or self, all right? Or nil if you don't want to pass any information, all right? Okay, so the important part that we have here uh, does not override any method from the super class. What did we do? All right, let me do it again. Prepare for segue and just leave it as that, okay? Now the code that I'm going to use, I'm going to check this segue, it's called segue. And then I'm gonna say segue. And there are two information that is important to me. Destination and identifier. Identifier if you wanna know the name and do whatever you want with it. Sender is the view controller we're going to. So if I say, if segue that identifier equal equal BMI, that's what I put in the there. That means where am I, which, where am I going to the BMI screen, right? So if I have multiple screen, I can do if statement or switch statement to know which one I'm going to. Then here, what do I do? I say, um, let BMI, BMI VC equal segue dot destination as I need to cast it to the name of the class I'm going to. And here I'm going to unwrap it because I am, this is called of course unwrap it, we will cover it later on. It knows I'm going because I know which class I'm going to, so I'm gonna force unwrap it. So let BMI VC equals segue that destination as BMI view controller. So now I have access to that view controller. What can I do? I can do BMI view controller dot name equal txt name dot text and I'm going to uh, again uh, unwrap it, force unwrap it. So now every time you move from one screen, the first screen to another screen, we check, is it, is it called BMI? If it is yes, I will get the information, pass it to the next screen, and in the next screen, it will, in the view did load, it will assign that attribute that is already set to this label, and then it will be displayed on the screen. All right. So let's run it and test it. So if I enter anything here, and I click on login, it put Ali here. And I'm gonna put it in debug to see, show you what happens inside the view controller. In this function, which is the segue identifier, if I go back to the simulator, if I click on login, watch, it will check, is the identifier is BMI, yes. It will check, assign the name. Yes, if you run it, that's what you're going to get. But if I go back and I click on register, do you think anything is gonna happen? If I click on register, what's the name? Is the identifier called BMI for the segue? No, because we did not set it. Only that one that ties, me, ties the first screen to the BMI screen. So now if I click on this, it skips this part. It doesn't pass any information. You got the idea? So now if I run it again, it give me this and I can dismiss the screen. 
One more thing, and then we'll be done. How to control, how to do this action programmatically. Instead of just tying the link all the time, I wanted to do it um, based on validation. If the username is correct. If the username is correct, then I wanna fire a particular segue. So I showed you how to do it with the button. I'm going to show you how we do it in the programs, all right? So if I stop, if we go to the storyboard, let's move that. <clears throat> and if I go to the main storyboard, let's hide this. And let's do this here. Okay, we had this link and we called it BMI, but I'm going to delete it. I'm going to delete it. So we delete it, but there is no link here now, right? So how do we click, a, how do we create a link, a segue from here to here, but it does not tie to any action? What do we do from the view controller, the first view controller, right to click, drag to this, and I'm going to select show. Now that title is back, the navigation controller is back, but it's not tied to the button, all right? What I'm going to do with the button, I'm going to add action to the button. So to validate if the user name is correct. So if I click on, uh, if we select this guy and I click on assistant and right to click from the button to this as an action. It's an action and I'm going to call it BTN login. And then you click on connect. All right. And let's close this and go to the view controller. So I added an action. We've done that before. I go to the view controller. And here is my action. Here's my action. All right. So now what I'm going to do. I'm going to check if the username is a value. Now, in, you know, we have username and password, so you can do it your own. You can put an and to do that. But I'm just gonna only check one value. So in here, I'm gonna say if txt name dot text equal Mira, then what happens? I'm going to equal, we need double equal. I'm going to Go to the next screen. How do we go to the next screen? We go to the next screen by saying perform segue with identifier. Perform segue with identifier. This one. Okay. And then the name of the segue we are going to. Now, I, didn't, I made a mistake. After I deleted that segue, I didn't give it a name. So if I go back to the main storyboard, we need to give this segue between this two screen a name. And if you click on the property, it doesn't have a name. So this name, it was VMI. I'm going to give it VMI again. All right. So we gave that segue an identifier again. All right. So the identif the the segue name is BMI, and then the sender is the button which is sender here. When does this happen? Only when I time Mira. You can add as many as, you know, any conditions you want. But this is how you fire a segue programmatically. You tie it from the view controller itself, not from an action, a button, and then you fire it in your code. So now if I run it, If I type in Mira, 
it will go and click on the login, it will take me here. But if I type in anything else, then it will not take me, all right? So that's how we can perform segues on actions and we can do it in programming, all right? This should be most of what you have to do for your assignment, your next assignment, all right? Uh, also, uh, the, the part about the BMI, because we did the controls and the calculations and then the, the, all the, the stuff that we've done before, you should be able to do it yourself and practice it yourself, all right? Any questions? All right, I will see you in the next lectures.